Hey, this is Jonathan Mokara for Video NC++. In a previous video, we've seen a technique for finding good names for things in code, and that was kind of like the fundamental, fundamental technique. Now, today in this video, I want to share with you more tips to get good names in code. So, one thing about naming is that it's a way to convey information to the readers of your code. With information, you want to disclose things, including your intentions, for example. So, naming is about disclosing information, but just the right amount. Well, so one thing what we don't want to do is obfuscate the, the information. One way to obfuscate information is to use abbreviation in the wrong way. So if you abbreviate everything and just to make compact names, then it's, it's becoming hard to read for no reason, right? Because you, you haven't optimized anything in your program for that. It's just harder to read. So one thing to avoid is abbreviations. Now, should we always avoid them? No. Like, say for example, if there's a name that everyone knows, like VAT, for example, for value added tax, well, maybe you don't want, we don't need to spell value added tax in your program, especially if it's something that's related to accounting and it's, it's popping up everywhere, VAT. So, there are abbreviations that are good and, the, and other abbreviations that we should avoid. So, how to make a choice? Well, one way to go about that is to check if one particular abbreviation could be understood by a user of the application. Because if it's the case, it means that this abbreviation is okay in the domain of your program. And in this case, it makes sense that it's reflected into code, right? So if it's not related to the domain and no one understands it, then don't do it, right? Now, there's the question about how long should a name be? Well, a name can be surprisingly long and still be understandable, but still, you don't want something to be bloated. Well, there are things that are of no use in a name and that just make it big bigger for no reason. So, those, those kind of things, um, there are like three things at least that we could say um, about name bloating that we should stay away from. So one is, well, if a function is just doing too many things, then you need to cram all those things in a name and the names get so big, right? So rather than making an abbreviation to compact it, um, it's, it's maybe a good time to think about the responsibilities of a given function or a class or a variable or anything really. Um, but that thing that's behind the name, that's too big because there are several things in it. Right, so it's that, that's refactoring time and, and split things, and you've got smaller things with smaller names. Another thing that bloats the name of a function, for example, typically, is when there's redundant information with the, the parameters that it's taking. So, for example, every parameter has a type, right? And since parameters are already in the prototype of a function and, the, and it's also in the arguments that we're passing at a calling site to a function, um, then there's no need to repeat this type information in the name of the function. So, for example, imagine a function that puts two strings together. So that's a function that could be called concatenate. Concatenate is a good name, but concatenate strings makes sense because it's made for, for putting strings together but it's not a good name because the information that it's operating on strings is already in the prototype and in the string that we're passing at call side to, to, to the function so let's just call it concatenate and not concatenate strings right that's that's putting types putting redundant information on types in a, in a function name is just bloat a third thing that we could avoid in names that, that makes them a little bigger but so much more confusing is negations. Oh god, I so hate that when you've got negations into your name because 
when when you use that thing variable or interface or function or whatever then you need to like flip your brain <laughs> and think the wrong way up right because okay this thing is like say is not valid so i've got this it's not valid so if i want it to test if it is valid then i need to do the negation of is not valid so that's not is not valid that's just ridiculous isn't it so we should just avoid negation in in names right we we have components or even operators in code like the exclamation point that does the job of, of putting a negation. So let's be direct in our names. And that also reduces the size of a name because there's not this negation part. That's about keeping the information in the name clear, like just as much as needed. Now there's another aspect of naming. It's something that's much more technical is that some languages just forbid some names, right? Like in C++, for example, there are some names that are just illegal, so you can't use them. But the thing in C++ with those names is that no one's going to stop you. And in particular, the compiler is not going to stop you. So what are those names? So it's, it, it has to do with underscores. If you have the name of anything, a symbol in your code, that has two consecutive underscores in it, then it's undefined because it could be that the compiler itself or the standard library uses this name because the name with two underscores, two consecutive underscores are reserved for compiler and standard library. So if you do your own, then there could be a conflict that compiles, but that doesn't do the right thing. Apart from two consecutive underscores, we can't do so starting a word, starting a symbol with an underscore followed by a capital letter. And in the global namespace, we can't even have a name that starts with an underscore at all. Right? So we just can't do that. We just, we just don't want to go that way. Thanks for watching this video about naming, which is so important. If you want more videos about naming or about expressive code in general, just subscribe to the channel. And if you liked it, put a thumb up, show it. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.